All right. Welcome to J&J &J Bowling. Today is my third session with Parker Bone the third. Go ahead and warm up. Okay, just so you know, your rev rate went to 295. So I don't know where the 500 was, but I think we're a little bit more realistic. And I yeah. know that's only one shot. Yeah, it's only one shot, yeah. But I one wanted shot. to make sure that... Yeah. So I've been changing a couple different things, I'll show you. And uh, well, you just get loosen, loosened up we'll the way from you there. need to. They are oils, right? Oh right. yeah. Okay. Yep. I want to see and make sure what we got out there. All right. We'll move a little bit. Smooth. Now, just so you know, this is the Stockholm 36 foot pattern. Okay. Whereas house shop would be over on lane three. Okay. So, do you bowl any pattern? Sometimes I we, we put some out. I okay. did the US 39 foot pattern the other day. Okay. I was a, All right. It was a disaster on my part. Well, well you, please understand, it, it's only a disaster because you're a product yeah, of your environment. It. Yeah. Your environment, for the most part, you ball on a house shot. So even like today, with us doing a lesson here, we can do it here. Yeah. But if you want to see how it's going to really pertain to you, you probably need to ball on a house shot. Right. You know, where it makes sense there. Yeah. Now, obviously, you just move left there. You got your ball to react. Yeah. And that's the similarities to a house shot. Yeah. The difference is, in a house shot, there's a real mountain of oil in the middle of the lane. Okay. Yep and you have a lot of dry outside. On a sport pattern of any kind, that oil starts to come up and the oil starts to get flattened out a little bit. So patterns can have some sort of shape to them, unless you're bowling AKA the US <laughs> Open that it's as flat as the right, floor, yeah. but every pattern will have some kind of shape. And if it doesn't have any shape at all and it's dead flat, the balls will break the lane down right. and make a shape out of the pattern yeah. that's on the lane. Okay. All right, we'll go. So far from the line, I tried, I did practice doing five steps to get closer to the line. Mm -hmm. It just didn't feel comfortable yet. I just, maybe something over the summer, I'll, I'm doing a summer league. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna try different things. Your ball picks up fine. Yeah. You know, I did move another board left because I did leave at seven. So I wanted to kind of maybe I just throw a better shot. I don't know. But. Well, one, the ball went through the pins, but two, you got to remember your ball still went light. Okay? okay, it ripped the rack. Don't get me wrong. Right. It says strike. Yeah. But the convincing strike is where the ball goes high flush. Right. So right. personally, I'd move one more left. Okay. All right. We'll do that. I still walk on a little angle. It's. Just try to just straighten well, it up. I see that your feet are, you start out a little bit like you're trying to open up the lane. Okay. Okay. And how I can tell that is the way that your feet are set up. Yeah. You're trying to set up your feet like this. Yeah. Well, that means you're going to walk this way. Yeah. So now when your feet are opened up like that and your hips are opened up, for you to walk the lane itself, you have to do an adverse motion and all of a sudden straighten out your walk or your right. technique to walk right. straight. Okay. So personally, if you're going to do that, Set up a little bit straighter so that your feet are going in the direction you're trying okay. to go to. All right. So do the same thing you said, right? Move one more left. Okay. But don't have your, see how your feet are angled? Yeah. Get them, get them a little straighter. All right. Yeah. There you go. That's high flush. Okay. Okay. Like Convincing, <laughs> convincingly, your ball went into the pocket yeah. and all 10 pins went down without you really sweating it out. Yeah. Could you have left a ring in seven? Yes. Yes. Could you have left a solid nine? 
Yeah, anything like that, or a solid 10. But if you look at where your ball hit the pocket at that moment in time, that particular shot, you go, that's a real strike. All right. See, that ball was a little further left. Yeah, that's all. And then it came back. So now, something typical to a house shot, when you miss left on a house pattern, it usually, for the most part, comes back yeah. all the time. Yeah. Now, it may get out there, and if there's a lot of dry, it may overhook, okay? But for the most part, your ball always will retain shape yeah. and come back and get to the pocket. Once again, convincingly, you got to the pocket pretty strong yeah. where all the pins went down. And everybody thinks, you know, you, they go, they go. well, I got them all down, I got a strike. Yeah. And a couple shots before you got them all down and you got a strike. Well, yes, but your ball is painting a picture of the lane every right. shot you bowl. Yeah. And if you look at that, the story behind it is ultimately how it goes through the pins. God knows I've thrown plenty of strikes, whether it's right. on TV or in a tournament or, yeah. or even if I'm practicing. But understanding what my ball is doing as it's going through the pins will tell me, yeah. okay, I need to make a small move or a small hand position change, or potentially I need to change a ball, but I need to get it a little bit more convincingly. Right. Okay, right. I don't want to be dependent upon, well, I hope they all <laughs> fall this shot. And yeah. No, you know a good solid shot off your hand, yeah, and when it gets to the definitely. pocket high flush, you can uh, rest and assured you're going to get them over more times than not. Yeah, there's uh, been plenty of times where I thought I threw a good shot, went back and reviewed it, and I'm like, no, that wasn't a good shot, mm -hmm. you know, so. Once again, that. Yeah, got a little pin action too. Yeah, yeah <laughs> but, but, but if you look at it though, you got a little pin action, but look at where your ball went. And furthermore, listen to the sound that time. Yeah. There was yep. nothing lazy about that ball. No. It, absolutely hit the pocket exactly where you're hoping it's going to hit yeah. and went right through the pins in a way that you go, okay, I kind of own what's going on right now. Right, definitely. Now, I am going to say a couple of things here when I'm watching you. You're setting up, obviously you were set up a little bit where your hips and your feet were opened up. Right. So that tells me every shot you're going to throw the ball to the left to some extent. Right. You're not a gentleman that has a lot of power. Right. Okay. Your power, honestly, I'm going to look at both of us very similar. Yeah. My rev rate's somewhere about 330. You know, I know I only looked at the first one. I haven't yeah. gone back to look at it anymore. Right. But if your rev rate was somewhere around 300, we're in proximity at that point. So therefore, I keep the lane shut down more times than not. Right. So keeping your feet, let me say, parallel to the boards or where you're going to go up the lane, right. that's going to be advantageous for you. Okay. The second thing I'm going to say is when you've got your ball and you got it set up, one or two shots, you actually, you're taking a full step without moving your ball. Yeah. That's gonna give you late timing. Yeah. Okay, we don't want that. Yeah. So I wanna see that ball move a little bit. Right. Then one or two shots, you believe it or not, you actually took a step and you're pulling your ball back. Oh, okay. okay. You're pulling it away from the pins back towards your body. We never want that. No. Okay, because that's an adverse motion. Right. I don't wanna see an adverse motion. Okay. Everything when you start initially, it all goes towards the pins. Right. Okay, your feet, your body, and yes, your ball too. Okay. So, you're gonna take and do that. It looks like you got your ball holding away from your body. Right. Let's move your ball a little bit closer to your body. Okay. Watch this, I'm gonna show you something really easy that even right you'll here. be able to tell. I know it's something that you and I discussed before. <laughs> yep. In the past. But now watch, you see how this here? Yeah. Get, and you're a big guy, but now watch. Move it back just a little bit. Right. This relaxes. Yeah. As soon as that relaxes, now you know, okay, my shoulders are down, I'm ready to go. Okay. Now when you step, the ball can't come back anymore. Right. Because it's already close enough to your body. Step and push your ball forward. Okay. Keep it going. <laughs> okay, well you want to have better balance. Yeah, yeah. It's alright. It's not a little different. But when when it goes, if you can imagine this, follow the leader. Yeah. Your arm and your step go all at the same time. If they go at the same time, now you're just casually walking past your ball, it's swinging, yeah. and then the ball comes down by your side, and you've got great balance at the foul line. All right. Let me say it, unlike that last shot. Yeah. 
Yeah, I know the push away is something that you and I have been talking about, and I guess I kind of got out of it. So push it out. Yeah, it right, still feels it a little uncomfortable. I'm just that's okay. Maybe that's the reason why I didn't learn. Your ball speed, believe it or not, your ball speed may pick up a tiny bit because of that. Right. Because now your ball, first of all, you don't have that adverse motion. Yeah. Which makes inconsistencies. One shot you got here, you push out. The next shot you're going forward and you're pulling your ball back. So it's going to change your timing. Okay. Okay. But now when you take and you have that ball tucked in, not by your side, but by your body there, when you go and you push the ball out yeah. in any way, shape, or form, your ball speed is going to pick up naturally right. because now the ball has a forward motion and it's swinging backwards. And yeah. when it comes down by your side, whoo, it's gone completely. All, right. All in a good way towards your target. Yeah. That was real good. Thank you. <laughs> Look at your numbers here and see. I want you to keep bowling, but. Yeah, that's yeah, fine. So your ball speed off your hand is just slightly over 18 miles an hour. Entry speed is somewhere around 14. Shows your rev rate. Your low rev rate was 306, and it looks like the highest one, believe it or not, was your last shot. Showed at 357. Oh. Doesn't look like it. <laughs> I'm just saying. You know, all right. Push and step. Okay, didn't get down quite as much on that one. You were a little yeah. bit taller. Yeah. You're a little taller this way. Yeah. The idea is to try to get down every shot so that that ball comes down off your hand and you're yeah. making a good solid pass at it. Which I didn't miss, probably because of that. So you, I didn't miss a little inside. You were, you were stiffer here because you're stiffer here and you don't get down. Now your ball's going to be inside a target. Yeah. All right. When you get down and you make that good solid pass to it, now your ball more times than not is going to have an opportunity to shape where you're aiming at. Right. Tuck it in there now. Push and step. Okay, a little bit light that time. Yeah. That appears to me that you missed it a little bit. Yeah. <clears throat> Rev rate went down just a tiny bit. Okay. Only down to 320. <clears throat> These are all numbers. When you sit there and look at the spec, though, to be honest with you, the great thing about Specto is it breaks down your game. Yeah. Just like your score, your score doesn't lie. Yeah. Your actual score when you get done with 10 frames, it's, the number is the number. Yeah. Regardless, once again, what your average is. Yeah. But when you sit there and you look at Specto and you look at your launch angle, you look at the target you're hitting, right. the position that you're at there, look at your speed off your hand, look at where your speed is going down lane. Yeah. When it gets into the pins. When you add up those things along with your rev rate, you start to find out some of the idiosyncrasies yeah. that are right or wrong, and right. that's what makes you. So every one of us is different, but when you try to break those down and manipulate those, now you can pinpoint one certain area and go, God, you know, my rev rate's kind of all over the map, or yeah. my ball speed. You know, I'm sitting here looking at your ball speed. Your ball speed doesn't look too bad. Yeah. You're fairly consistent there. Yeah. But you may have one or two that dip down. Yeah. Even though they strike, yeah. If that ball speed dips down, now you're trying to talk and figure out what's going on on your league yeah. of the third game. I don't know, maybe you're getting a little tired. Maybe yeah. you throw two or three shots that are even a little bit more excessively slower. Right. So if they're a little slower and they jump and they go through the nose, and you go, oh man, I just left this split here. Now what's going on here? So then what do you do? You try to move in a little bit and you throw one a little bit firmer or normal speed, right. and it doesn't hook back. And you go, okay, now I'm scrambled <laughs> eggs. So. I've done that a lot. <laughs> I'm like, I'm out of options, it seems like. Ah. It's a little squirmy with the foot. A little squirmy, so you're a little stiff again. 
Yeah, so I need to get down. Make yes. sure that we stay down there to make that pass at it. Okay. So when you go through it, make sure when you drive through, stay down there with it. And I'm not telling you to get really low, I'm right. just telling you to get a little bit lower than what you are. Okay. That was lower. Okay? That was lower. That was, personally, that was a better pass. Yeah. You might have missed it a little bit because you left the seven. Yeah. Point. Okay? But that was definitely a better pass there. Okay. Hold on All one right. second. I'll be right back here. No, you're fine. How we doing? Super early, Tony. You're super early. I'm sorry? Oh, okay. Stockholm's on lane two. That I do know. Were you getting both lanes or one? Just one. I just need one. Okay. Let me just tell her there. How are you? Good. How are you? <laughs> the gentleman for lane... Stockholm and lane two, I guess he's, he just walked in. He said he's a little early. Yeah, I know. I know it's on lane two. Pulling a tournament next week or this no, week? I just need to work on short patterns because I stink at them. <laughs> Well, it'll be you'll be fine. I like that one, but um. Now let me let me show you something down the lane here, just for a second here. Okay. Because you don't have a lot of shots, but you got enough to make a difference. Yeah. So your pattern, your pattern is going to end somewhere right in here. Yeah. If you bowl any centers that you bowl that we have these markers. Brunswick's markers, right. okay? They're always on the 15th board, 34 to 37 feet, all right? Okay. These markers down here are always on the 10th board, 40 to 43 feet. Okay. So if you come into a facility and they say, you know what, you're bowling a tournament today and you're bowling on XYZ pattern and you right. know the pattern is a certain length. Let me see. What's up, babe? What he's on that pattern. Yeah, so lane two is two. Right, but he, okay, but you're doing a lesson. Did he want a pattern? I got yeah, we're okay here. Okay. He's totally fine here. Okay. <laughs> yep. So, so this just gives you an idea of where your ball may or may not pick up. Now you can see clearly right here, the pattern's ending. This happens to be a Stockholm pattern here. It yeah. clearly ends at about 36 feet. Okay. And when we look at the board, Stockholm says 36 feet. Right. So that's where the machine is ending. Okay. But now look at here. This is the clear back end, and you can see there's nothing on the right there. Yeah. But look at, you see these little hash marks? Yeah. That's the carry down. Okay. Every ball that goes down the lane is going to go through the oil in the front part of the lane, and then it's going to bring carry down back here. So look here, look at these hash marks. Yeah. What do you think is going to happen to your bowling ball after yeah. you've got two or three or four games in? Oil. I see some oil. And we down. certainly know, and there's still, here's more carry down, okay? Yeah. It's going to be less oil down here, yeah. more right at the end of the pattern. You can see it clear right there. Exactly. So now this, that's 36 feet. Here's 42 feet. And look at the amount of oil we got there. That's and six feet past there. Yeah. And uh, what have you thrown? 15 or 20 yeah. shots? Yeah. Maybe? Yeah. So you're going to have 10 to 15 shots just in practice. Right. And then you've got all of your shots for your first game. We're not counting any spare balls by anybody. Yeah. And it's not just yours. What about the guys on the right that have to t shoot their four pinner and seven yeah. pinner bucket? They're carrying oil down too. And if right. they're doing it with a plastic ball, they're even carrying it down more because the plastic ball is gonna stay, it's gonna hydroplane on a lane and just roll through. Yeah. So you have to understand all of those things as to why your ball isn't picking up as much right. as it did in the very beginning. Okay. That's why I said, if you've got your hand here or you've got a little bit stronger ball, Get your hand up a little bit more you gain a little bit more roll a little okay. stronger roll right right now you're you're comfortable i can see that yeah. in your hand you're not doing a whole lot with it yeah so either you have to go to a little bit stronger ball right or get your hand up a little bit more yeah. 
to try to do that. Sometimes on the left side of the lane, believe it or not, you can move a little left because you're not breaking it down near as bad. Yeah. Okay? If there's two or three lefties, yeah. you're going to start to create a hole. Yeah. Just like the right side right. one. But on the left side, you don't get that. Yeah. Not near as much. It takes quite a bit of bowling to get that. You know? Yeah. The other thing that makes a difference is it makes a difference with what balls you're throwing. Like, let's look right here. The gentleman that come down here. Yeah. That ball's got some surface to it. Yeah. Doesn't take a rocket science to look at it. It's got surface yeah. to it. Okay. So you look. This is a little bit shiny. Obviously, we know that's a urethane ball. Urethane ball is going to break yeah. down the front part of the lane a little bit more, a yeah. little bit quicker because of, of the porosity of the bowling ball. Right. Okay. So when you look at that, that makes a difference. If you're throwing a reactive ball, the yeah. only thing that's happening for the most part, the back end part of the lane is getting a little bit tighter. Right. But it's not, you're not tremendously breaking right. down the front. Maybe a little bit, but nothing that's getting to be outrageous. Okay. Okay. All right. Hold on. Give me one second. I want to make sure there's nothing on the bottom of my feet. All right. Remember, keep it tucked in again. Yep. Push it out and step. That ball sincerely went through the pins. Yep. Every step of the way. No squirm, no nothing. Just nope. held it. And nope. This was good. Okay? Yeah. And so when I look at that, I go, convincing strike. Yeah. Okay? You don't need to change anything at that point. Yeah. As a matter of fact, all you want to do is make sure that you repeat it like that for yeah. about the next 30 or 40 years. Right. <laughs> <laughs> push and step. Push. Oh. We're focused on a target there. No. I gotta develop that muscle memory. Mm -hmm. So I'm actually thinking, as I'm going through this, I'm actually thinking about everything I'm supposed to do. So. <laughs> Push it, there you go. All right, good shot, yeah. really good shot. But did you notice the way your seven pin went down? Just, Just a little, late. yeah, yeah. Ball's telling you a story. Yeah. So, story, is either one they're a tiny bit carrying down or you I missed it just yeah. a little bit i'd say i missed it okay <laughs> yes so now remember this when you got your ball up there and you're getting there you still got your hand there yeah. fiddle with that a little bit get that hand up a little bit okay. or once again hand position turn a little bit inside yeah and then even you can get it up. Okay. It's going to make your ball go down there, and it's going to make it shape All even right. more. Okay. Since I have a weak wrist, I'm just putting that out there. If I hold it like this, mm -hmm. is that fine? Like I said, I can be like this, or I can be like this. I can okay. be out there. Like, right. you like can say, I held it like that. Wrist positions and hand positions are endless. Okay. You can do whatever you want to do. The one thing I will say is, regardless whether it's me or anybody else yep. giving you a lesson, if you do something that causes pain, yeah. Okay, understand it. Let's have a conversation over it. Because yeah. you should never do anything that causes yeah. pain. Yeah. yeah, you might burn your leg sometimes if I'm telling you to stay down and hold the shot, depending yeah. on who you are. All right. Yeah, maybe your wrist hurts a little bit after you tried hooking it for 20 or 30 frames. Right. Okay? You got It's like everything else, you got to wear into it. Yeah. I'm going to look at you and your game. The very first time you came out to bowl, if you bowled three games, you were probably somewhat exhausted. Yeah. And then you get used to three games, and then all of a sudden one day you come and bowl 10 or 12 games, right. and now you're really exhausted. Right. So you got to earn that stamina level. Yeah. Well, your wrist, your body, your fingers, your legs, they're all the same. Right. You've got to work your way into that and then try to make that muscle memory to right. repeat it, but then strengthen the muscle okay. to do it for a long period of time. Is there any certain exercises that you think I can do with my hand without having the ball in my hand? 
Is there anything that you can think of? One of the of? things that you can do, believe it or not, people take a rubber ball, and they'll squeeze it okay. while they're riding down the road. Okay. okay. I, yeah, I want you to focus on the cars. I want to focus <laughs> on the traffic and everything else. Don't, don't, you know, yeah. go, oh, I dropped the ball and start looking for it. And yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but if you do things like that, you find a strong enough rubber ball. That will actually help strengthen your wrist right. and things that you're doing in there. And okay. you, can, you can take and squeeze it this way. You can bend your hand and squeeze yeah. it this way. Just so that your, your wrist gets used to being in that motion. Because okay. remember this, when you start, if you've got your wrist locked, and I'm going to put it up here, yeah. if I lock it and then I push it out, right. and I want to keep it in that motion, from the start to the end of my approach is approximately three seconds. Right. Okay? Two and a half if you're quick, right. four if you're really slow, right. but the pass at it is roughly two and a half to four seconds by the time you get up there to walk through the approach. Okay. Some people will start up like this, and when they go, they lose it immediately because yeah. they bend their wrist back. Okay, and everybody's a little different. You know, somebody, especially now in, in today's <laughs> world, they're gonna say, well, look at your son. Your son starts up like this, and when he pushes right. the ball out, his hand is completely yeah. broken back back. He's unique because he's back here broken, but when he comes back down- He puts it back. He reloads back up and gets exactly where he needs to be, and it becomes fluid-like. Gotcha. Okay. okay. All right, well, I will try that and see how that works. To my, 30, shot. 40, yeah, my shot. Yep. Let's get to my shot here. There we go. Right there. Select game. Doesn't matter how hey, many work. players. <laughs> Continue. Try again. Continue. 99. And go. You're good. Yep. It'll give you a full rack every time. Try it again. Now, when you do that, make sure at the point of release, you have to unload. Okay. Okay? Don't leave it like this and then you can't get yeah. it off your hand there, okay? It's got to get down here and your ball has to unload and let your wrist roll behind the ball. Okay. So see, your other hand position was really good. There's nothing wrong with your right. other hand position. Okay. But now you're trying to incorporate something else. Yeah. Something else. Yeah. Okay? All right, so. I took a little step. Hmm? I said I took a little step over. Yep, but yep. Do it again. Will you, um, I'm gonna check the revs on that one just to see if actually, because I did, you know, I did hold a little bit different. You're up at 360 there. On that one for okay. just cupping so, it. Just cupping it. Now, 360, although two or three, yeah, 316 before that, 316 before that, and then that particular one was 360. So now, Keep in mind, over the last probably 10 that I've seen you throw, I haven't seen 360 on any one of them. Yeah. Okay? And it doesn't mean just because you're cupping your wrist that all of a sudden four and a quarter is gonna show right, up. Right, right. You still have to let that ball and reflexes, when that ball comes off your hand, your hand has to rotate behind the ball. Yeah. Everybody's reflexes are different. I know that my reflex now is not what it used to be 20 or 30 years ago. Right. So the ball poignantly rolls off of my hand. Whereas you look at some of the kids in today's world, yeah. I mean, they got that rubber band wrist or that rubber band release and it's just bam. It's just crazy. I mean, they're, they look like little twigs and they're just- Sawing on it for all just, it's worth. And just like revs, I'm like, how, how in the world? Yep. Like, it's all the point of reflex at the bottom. When they get down there, it's woo. And that ball's off their hand, woo. All right. So you can load up as much as you want, but you still have to release it. Yeah, all right. Do it again, that was inside a target. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I'm still trying to, like you said. Mm -hmm. Now, if your hand's loaded up, you're going to come around and that ball's going to shape and come back. Yeah. I guarantee you had to miss that one at the bottom. Yep. 
316. <laughs> Plain and simple. So you had your, you had 360, the one that we went and looked at. Yeah. Then you had mid 350, low 350, 316. Hmm. Is there a reason that the 316 okay, left the three pin? Yeah. <laughs> Push it. Still missed a little yep. bit. Yeah. Out. Well, see, when you're practicing this now, loading it up, and I'm going to tell you right now, neither one of us are Houdini. Right. Okay? So when you practice it, you're trying to get another trick into your arsenal. Yeah. And the only way you're going to be able to perfect it, you got to do it again yeah. and again and again. Yeah. It would be nice if somebody could just dial in you and say, okay, we're going to give you a 375 rev rate right now on what you're bowling right. on, and every shot's going to be perfect off your hand. If it was, you'd probably be bowling on the PVA <laughs> Tour. Yeah. Load the hand up there. Put the hand, if you, if you can, get it loaded up. There you go. All right. Push it out, push and step. See the way it shapes more yeah. that way? Yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah, I'm fine. <laughs> and that's just a, yeah, it's just a little but, weird but on that, but it, it feels good. different. Yeah. And, all right, and I know that I'm I'm babysitting that shot. Yeah. But it feels different. But you may throw three or four in a row, and you go, well, God, I thought I started out up there, but you didn't. Yeah. It was you went from here to there. It was very subtle. Yeah. Or if you got up here, as soon as you started pushing out, your hand went back there again. You see right. what I'm saying? Yeah. That's what we don't want. Okay. Sure. You guys are both trying to play the gutter. If you guys kick each other, I'd be really surprised. <laughs> All right, like this. There you go. Push it out. There you go. I was in the oil. Yeah, I got it out a little bit there. Yep. That was in the oil that time. So because it's in the oil, now when you're loading up like that, yeah. unless that hand really releases, now your ball is going to skip. It's still going to go. Yeah. Yep. Right. Now, do you have a ball that's stronger than that? Um, maybe that reactive over there. Maybe. Okay. All right, we'll do uh, one more. That was really in. That was really in. Yeah. We're gonna find that out by looking at, at <laughs> the spec though there. Well, I kept missing outside, so I decided okay, well, to try here. to... 5.8, 4.7, 4.7, 4.5. Now, 6.4. So at the arrows, you were two boards deeper than what you were all the other ones. Break point. Here's your break point. This is your most recent one here. Okay. Okay. So the arrows, the last shot you threw, you hit 7, and your break point was 6.9. Look where your break point is on all these other ones. Right. Okay. So it tells you that your ball is in there. Yeah. Rev rate was 379. Yeah, That's good. It felt like it had more. Okay. I got it. Yeah, but it was in the oil. So the oil allowed it to keep there, keep it holding line. Yeah. But now you've got a little bit more on your ball because your wrist is up, so the ball is still going to go through the pins. Yeah. It's not going to hit like a marshmallow. Right, right. All right, so we can do this reactive. It's my second nose ball. Okay. We'll, um, we'll see what that does. Now, are you staying in the same spot? Yeah, we'll okay. just, just see, what, see what we can do. That's inside in on that, but I wanted to see, kind of, my thumb kind of stuck too a little bit. Okay. So. Actually, it looks like it started up soon and then went nowhere. Yeah.
You're bowling on that shorter pattern, make sure you throw it out there. Okay, went through the pins. Yeah. Certainly went through the pins. You blew the five over there into the 10 pin spot. Right. But it wasn't that high flush no, shot that we're no. looking for. So. You think changing, either moving over a board or maybe holding it different? Like I, I would move, I would move a little bit somewhere. <laughs> All right. Ah, I missed. No, that was terrible. Yeah. That's, that's that shot that you go, thankfully they're both together. Let yeah. me make my spare move to the next one. Yeah, frame. right. Try to yeah. forget about that one. Yep. I will say one good thing. I, I hate, to, hate to say it. I've been doing pretty good staying on my side. Okay. So it's... You're not bowling bad. Yeah. I just think that you get lost in the shuffle based on your ball reaction, mainly due to the third game. Yeah. Sometimes the second game and then I fix it. <laughs> Push it. See, that ball is smoother. This, yeah. ball, this ball here is asymmetrical, okay. okay? You're sitting here using this hammer here, the 3D offset. So yeah. that ball's got more of a pop to it. Yeah. Where the symmetrical hammer, the reactive one you're using there, is it's smoother. Yeah. It's not quite as poppy as your 3D. Yeah. So that's what you have to look at. Layout wise, they're similar. Yeah. Okay. I can see that, that they're similar there. So if your back ends get a little bit tighter, and this is yours too, obviously yeah. it's similar again. Yeah. If your back ends get a little tighter, you want to bring this up or bring it down so that your ball will start up. Somewhere. So if you had a, a ball with a pin that was here or even here a little bit, okay. it's going to bring your break point a little bit closer to you. Now okay. you're not going to feel like you have to work at it as much to get it up the hill. Okay. Keep in mind, a ball that has a break point a little bit closer to you is going to be smoother on the back end. Yeah. The sooner the ball breaks on the lane, the smoother it's going to be on the back end. What ball do you suggest for, like, if, if I was going to get another one drilled for basically pinned down, I guess, which, would you recommend a strong ball or more like a... You can, get another, weaker. you can get another stronger ball, okay. whether it's symmetrical or asymmetrical, wouldn't really matter there. I don't want to see you get just, a, let me say, a pearl lengthy ball. Yeah. That wouldn't do you any good, okay? But you can get a ball that's similar in technique to this or a little bit stronger overall. And the reason that you'd want that, because you want the ball to start up. Yeah. So don't get a stronger ball laid out exactly the same yeah. because it's going to give you the no exact point. same thing. Yeah, exactly. Okay? Get the stronger ball and now move it down. Uh, you know, move the pin a little bit closer, let me say, to your ring finger, okay. or even a smidge below or down here under your ring finger, okay. so that the ball will start up sooner. The shape is gonna be earlier, like we talked about. It's gonna be smoother on the back end, but the fact that the ball is gonna start up sooner, now it's gonna read the lane and go right. through the pins in a continuous motion that you're gonna go, oh, I like that. When they're fresh, maybe not, the yeah, ball's not right yeah. for you. The, uh, the new, new Widow, the hybrid, mm -hmm. would that be recommended for that, that or? That would give you a look like that. Okay. That would give you a stronger look, okay. for sure. You know, but you may want to break the shell on it too. Yeah. Okay, don't leave it shiny. Okay. Make sure you break the shell on it. Now, what do you break the shell with? How much? You know what? I'm not telling you to kill it. But if you break the shell with a thousand, yeah. you're definitely going to make it where the ball is going to start up sooner. Okay. Don't get, don't buy a high-end ball for hook or more hook. Yeah. And then make it look like a mirror. Right. That's not doing you any good. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, I just want to get suggestions from you. Um, yeah, that's, a, that's a ball I've been looking. At. I still have a redemption that I use. Mm -hmm. Time, time. Redemption to time. is a. That's a real rolly ball. Yeah, it does. It really okay. grabs the lane. And it just wants to go. Exactly. So because that's a rolly ball, it's not going to give you skid snap like, let me say, yeah. your 3D offset. But now that ball is going to grab the lane sooner once yeah. again, and it's going to be a continuous yeah. motion. But it's going to be continuous smooth motion. Yeah. That's what you're looking that at. Thing, that thing does want to move. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. 
but that might be a ball for you to go to come third game of your league. Yeah. When the back ends get a little bit flaky and right. a little bit carry down, especially for bowl one or two more left-handers. Right. But now when you're bowling with those guys, they're going to break down that front part of the lane. Remember, I said you're not going to break it down much by yourself. Yeah. But if you've got two or three of you on a given night on the pair, you're going to start to create that right. trough in the front exactly like the right-handers do. Yeah. So now you got to move in yeah. and make the ball do what it needs to. So that ball's definitely not shaping through the pins like your 3D so, one. Now, is it one of those that, hey, this ball's not working for the lane, let's not use it? Like, you're like... It's not near as good for you as the 3D. Yeah. I'm gonna tell you that right now. Do you change the surface on your ball at all? I'm never. That's one thing I wanted to get into, try to figure that out. It's something I plan on researching or trying to figure out. I, I've never, put serves on any bowling ball Are ever. Are these your common balls that you use all yes. the time? Yep. So you love them for whatever it is. Yeah, I was trying them. to set an arsenal where you can yep. have, you know, first game something, when the lanes break down, have it, you know, and I thought this would, this is pretty strong too. Okay. Um, you, with all the balls that you brought here, do you have any ball that's like, eh, I use it sometimes, I don't use it other ones? Uh, I think I might have, maybe, let me see. I do, I don't know why I didn't bring it up here. Yeah, so this was supposed to be my third game ball. As soon as I get out of here. Okay, come on with that ball. Do you use that much? Sometimes, no. Sometimes, yes. not a lot. Do you have an Aberlon pan? No. Okay. I'm not even sure what that throw, is, honestly. Throw <laughs> two or three shots with that, I'll be right okay. back. Do we have any pads back here? That wasn't good. Wasn't a good shot. slower. You what? Do it slower. Okay. Yeah, I do have one pad in there. I don't know which somebody gave it to me. It's sitting in there. Don't for worry, years. we're not quoting you on it. <laughs> yeah. I just want you to throw a good one here. With this ball? Yep. Alright. And then I'm gonna change it. Alright. All right, just let's base it on that. Okay. That ball obviously didn't pick up as much as you wanted to. Yeah. Okay? I did move to the right, though, a little bit, because it seemed like I did throw a Brooklyn strike with okay. it, but speed might have been down. So now watch here. So we can obviously see where your ball's rolling. Yeah. Now, you say you've never hit a ball with a head before? Never, ever. So now we see the ball there. See how I'm making it a little bit duller here? Yeah. So now watch. And this, keep in mind, this is only 1500. Okay. They make them way more aggressive <laughs> than this. And obviously there's other pads that are, that are less in strength. Now go throw your ball. All right, same spot? Yep. Same spot. Oh, 
missed. Missed. <laughs> yeah, but you see how it took off on the back end? Yeah. Do it again. All right. Your ball's got more teeth in it now. Okay. Because your ball's got more teeth in it, it's certainly going to pick up. See if I can get it out where I need to get it at. That looks good. Uh, I thought it looked good. Okay. Well, when you start hitting your ball with these pads, the lower the number, the more the ball's going to change the surface. Okay. That's 1,500. That's not a tremendous amount, but that's enough. Your okay. ball definitely should pick up and change direction there. So any of your balls that you start to do that with, typically a lot of surface on balls, uh, a regular urethane ball, the guys that are using, they're putting 500 on them. Some of them are putting 360, okay? They're putting quite a bit of surface. Right. So 360 or 500 is going to be like the carpet, the higher the number, the smoother it gets, where 3,000 or 4,000 is going to be like glass. Okay? And you're changing the outside surface of the ball, so we haven't changed inside of the ball. The ball's already drilled. Yeah. Wherever the pin is, you know, or yeah. the CG and, and the, the heavy spots, everything right. else that comes into play there, you're changing the outside surface of the ball or the porosity of, okay. the, of the ball that's going to allow it to grab the lane differently in right. some way, shape, or form. Okay. Now, during the competition or whatever, um, I pull a ball out the back. Say it doesn't have service on it. You're not allowed to put service on it during league. You have no. to do a prior. You have to do it. You can do it typically. 99.99% of leagues are going to allow you to do it in practice session up until right. your first ball. Okay. Most tournaments are the same. Right. Occasional tournaments will not allow you to touch the surface of your bowling ball once practice begins. Okay. Okay, right. typically a tournament like that, you're gonna yeah. know it going in because you bowled a fair amount of yeah. other scratch tournaments okay. and they're gonna say these are the rules, AKA like uh, a prime example would be Junior Gold. Right. The competitors at Junior Gold, and I know that you're not a junior bowler, yeah. but the competitors at Junior Gold, they have to do whatever they wanna do their bowling ball surface before they walk into the bowling center. Wow. So they can't even touch it while they're there. So if you look at that, they take care of their prep work is before they right. get into the center. So you do it in the parking lot, but that way there's no pads anywhere yeah. while they're in any kind of competition. Okay. So I gotta get this ball ready just in case. Well, for you, it, saying, if saying I would, almost you know, everything that you're gonna bowl, if you need to change your surface, you change it in practice session. Yeah. Okay, but if you're bowling, and let me just use that ball there, let me say that that's the ball that you typically put 500 on. Yeah. Freshen up with 500 when you get done bowling your league that night. Yeah. Okay, or when you get your stuff and you're putting it out there, freshen it up with 500 in the back there before practice yeah. starts. Because normally I wouldn't use this ball right out of the gate. This would be their game. Okay, so that ball for you is more when the lane's starting to break yeah. down a little. Yeah, it's supposed to be. It's okay. what it was bought for. Right. It's, and it does, I mean, it's a solid ball, so it, you know, it goes down there and normally it'll go down there and it'll stay. As soon as it hits the dry, it'll, it won't continue. Yeah, no, it's not a big poppy ball. Yeah. You know, once again, it's a symmetrical bowling ball. So, and how you tell symmetrical is this. There's a bomb spot, a locator spot. Okay. Okay. These here, you got a pin, you got your weight block. Pin, you got your weight block. Yep. Okay. You don't see the bomb spot back over here. Okay. Okay, this one here, again, I don't know if you drilled it out there, but that, once again, yeah. that's just a plain symmetrical ball and ball. Yeah. Where you can sit there. Most regular purple hammers are that way. Plastic balls are plastic balls. Okay, I don't see nothing in that one here. Plastic ball is just gonna be yeah. a pancake weight block okay. for the most part. But when you see something like that, okay. The secondary locator pin. That'll tell you that it's an asymmetrical. Okay. Now, for you to understand asymmetrical, probably the best way is a symmetrical ball, the weight block that's inside is going to be something round. It doesn't matter how you turn it. Okay. It's all going to be ma manipulated the same exact way. Right. If you put a coffee mug in that ball, and that's the weight block, Right. now it's going to be asymmetrical. Okay. When you start turning another way, it's going to really offset the inner dynamics of the bowling ball. Right. That's why okay. you see things like that. Okay. 
Makes sense. <laughs> so putting surface on this ball maybe didn't make tremendous yeah. difference because it's a smoother rolling ball. Yeah, yeah, ball. yeah. Okay. Then it's a little inside. A little but inside. But you can still see the way that the ball picked up on the lane yeah. and went through the pins. Yep. Do you want me to try the vibe at all? Do you want me throw to it. just to, so you can kind of see what that does also? Yep. Right. Go ahead and throw it. All right. Or I can see what it does. We'll, um, we'll go over here. I'll put a few pieces of tape in here so hopefully it don't stick. A little squirmy on the foot still. A little squirmy on the foot. You got to, and that's you. You got to make sure that you stay down on yeah. it. Okay? So if you do some one-step practice sessions where yeah. you just swing the ball like yeah, this. Yeah, sometimes I do, yeah. Okay. Put all your weight, transfer all your weight onto that finishing leg. Okay. So that you feel this. Yeah. See how I'm down? I'm not squirming. I'm not. Yeah. As soon as you get here and you try to come up, that's when your foot starts to right. move and your body starts to swiggle. Okay. We're not talking about size of individuals. Your size, you're built differently than me. Yeah. Okay? But any one of us, to the smallest kid to the biggest guy, when you put all of your weight down on that leg and you stay down, right. you're not gonna move. Right. Okay? Okay. And your leg, unless you've hurt yourself or you got a hip or back problem, your leg should be strong enough to hold you. It yeah. Holds you all the time when you're walking around. <laughs> yeah. Like, but I did stay down, like, no squirm. You did stay down, but that ball's not picking up as yeah. much to go through the pitch. It's a paralyzed ball. Okay. So let's go back to this then, because you said this this ball obviously looked the best. Yeah, yeah. That ball to me looks like it's got it's got the best pop for you. Okay. Just gotta remember where I stood at. Well, we'll find out. Push it. <laughs> See the, see the shape that ball wants to make? Yeah. That asymmetrical ball has the best pop for you. These, the other three that you have there are smoother rolling balls. Okay. They don't, they don't pop off of it just because they're, they're a symmetrical ball. Your asymmetrical ball gives you that added right. extra. So I'm going to say this, when your lanes start to break down, when it's not for you, they're not breaking down, they're carrying down. Yeah. Okay? If they're carrying down and that back end gets a little, be a little bit squirrely for you, you need a stronger asymmetrical. Okay. Okay, you need something that's got some teeth to it. Okay. And that's just putting service on it or buying another ball? You, one, you? one is buying a stronger ball. Okay. Okay, but number two, buying a stronger ball that's got some teeth into it. So therefore, if you need to do a little bit extra to it, you yeah. do it. Now you can use a symmetrical ball that's got teeth to it, right. but it's still not going to give you as much pop yeah. off of it yeah. as that asymmetrical one will. Okay. What do you recommend for, you know, for something that's yeah, going to be this? I mean, they're they're, they're out honestly or, or get ready there's out. <laughs> a fair amount of them that are out there. When we say that, let me look through here. <laughs> Because I like to try to make sure that I give people yeah. an idea of something that's going to make sense for them. Because you had suggested the offset before and I never bought it. I went and got the reactive when it came out. Mm -hmm. You wanted me to get the other one. <clears throat> See, I want you to have a strong ball, but I don't want to have something that's too, too crazy for you. Right. Okay. So, like an archetype, that ball would be a, a really good ball. That would be a strong ball that's got some teeth to it. A brutal collision, a deep okay. deep brutal collision. It's a, it comes through, it's shiny, but if you need, if it doesn't have the right pop to it, for you, break the shell a little bit so it's got a little teeth. But once again, the brutal collision does have a pretty good shape to it okay. on the back end. All right. So archetype, the brutal co uh, collision, uh, you can get an, Envy Tour would give you something there that you could take and go with. Uh, Sensor Pearl is going to be something similar to what you have here. 
at least in my eyes it would be. Right. Uh, a Katana Assault would have something like that to it. I think a GB4 would be a, a little, it's gonna be too smooth for you. I don't think it's gonna really make that move for you that we're, we're talking about or looking for. Yeah, I do have the hybrid one, the, uh, the old one. A mindset. Now, a mindset's a really strong ball. Okay. You know, you don't have a lot of speed. I wouldn't want them. I think the mindset might break it's a little too fast okay. for you. So therefore, I would lean towards an archetype. You do know? you suggest the same layout for that, or do you? Personally, I'd like to see your layout a little bit lower. Longer. L lower. Lower, lower, I'm sorry. Lower. Move the pin down just a little bit more. Okay. Okay. And uh, right. base that on your pro shop guy, whoever you're yeah. talking to, yeah. okay? But if you move it a little bit lower, then the ball's gonna pick up a little bit sooner. Yes, it will be smoother, but the fact that it's a stronger ball overall is gonna have more teeth to it. Okay, all right. That's what we wanna do. Sounds good. All right. All right. Make all sense? Yeah, definitely, definitely. All right. Well, good deal. We'll throw one more. Let me see a, a, a right. good strike here because- uh, All right. That way you're well on your way because throw them all like that <laughs> okay but make yeah. sure please make sure that that ball and it's got to move yeah okay you get a, a fair amount of shots I'm just being honest that you want to move that foot and then all of a sudden oh now I gotta yeah. move the ball okay, okay? I don't want to see that because it's gonna give you a late timing and then you get here and your ball still back here you're using upper body to pull through it right when you pull through it okay. it's not gonna be the same repeated motion all right all right. All right. Well, I appreciate it. All right, my Thanks, friend. sir. It was nice seeing you. You're welcome. You too. Give you these things back. I know that uh, you, you got a lot of money spent in these things there. Yeah. So, if you uh, still want to bowl longer, obviously you can bowl longer if you need to. Okay. That's totally up to you. I've got a small appointment I got to get to, and then I got to get back here because there's a party going on that I need to be part of this okay. party that's coming in. Here. All right. But uh, you can, you'll pay Leslie. Okay. We're never there. Okay. That was 125, but if you wanted to bowl, be it a half an hour, an hour, you pick a time frame, then you can just pay her for everything. Okay. Yeah, you know, sounds good. I might do the, uh, well, he's, uh, how long is he bowling for? Just, I'm just saying, I was going to do the whole lights on the lane and all that, but if he's going to be a little bit, then I'll, I can just wait. Be here for another 30 minutes. Okay. Well, I can just wait. It'll be okay. fine. Yeah, I don't know if they're gonna have the lights on or out for the party or not. We can ask directly. Yeah, I was just going, yeah. All right, let me just stop this video. But. All right, thank you for watching J&J &J Bowling. <laughs>